Marvel's Ant-Man is set in the San Francisco Bay Area, and much of it was filmed on location. Let's see what we can find. These locations are all over the place, so we're gonna need a car. Luckily, let's see if this works. <laughs> it worked. All right, let's go find some filming locations. Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go. Woo! Welcome to the Something or Other Tour. We're here in San Francisco, California. You may be aware of a little thing called the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, the Ant-Man movies are set here in San Francisco, and I had fun trying to find some of the filming locations that they actually used here in the city. They filmed some of it in Atlanta, some wasn't real, but a lot of it was filmed on location here in San Francisco. Ant-Man is the story of Scott Lang, a small-time but talented thief who's pressured into becoming the hero after he steals the Ant-Man suit from the original inventor, Dr. Hank Pym. Pym notices Scott's talents and thinks they could be useful, so he trains him to become the Ant-Man. Ant-Man is one of my favorite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think he's super underrated. I mean, it's Paul Rudd. How can you not love Paul Rudd? Got a great cast, great story, it's funny, and of course, great locations. So let's go find some of them. Our first stop is one of my favorites. This is where Scott Lang lived. When Paul Rudd first gets out of prison, he comes home and he's living at the Milgram Hotel in the Tenderloin of San Francisco. It was called the Milgram Hotel as a nod to a Marvel artist named Al Milgram. In real life, it's the Riviera Hotel. So presumably Ant-Man and his friends, Paul Rudd would be upstairs up there plotting and planning and scheming. Paul Rudd was walking right up here with his free Baskin Robbins after he got fired. <laughs> Can't tell if this is the same entryway as the movie or not. I don't think so. And that's right, the Riviera Hotel is on the National Register of Historic Places. The building was built in 1907. Pretty cool historic building. The Tenderloin's the area where San Francisco gets its whole reputation from. This is also the location where Scott Lang first tries the Ant-Man suit on and is chased out by a rat tumbling right past the hotel sign. So right up in those windows, Paul Rudd and friends would be plotting and scheming. T.I. would be up there. <laughs> this is one of the wilder parts of town, so it makes sense for an ex-con to get out, be released here, and be upstairs with his buddies. And for our next location, we're gonna... Wait, can I show you something? What now? Don't get mad, though. All right, you ready? All right, what is it? Oh my God, oh my God, where'd you go? Right here. Where'd you go? In the second movie, after some success as Ant-Man, Scott Lang upgraded his living situation. Right here on 18th in Missouri is Ant-Man's house from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Sometimes I watch movies, I see the locations, and I want to try to find them myself. You can't just Google a lot of them, but where's the fun in that? I often pause movies and jump right into Google Maps or Google Earth and get to searching. So when they had the high shot of this building, I was like, oh, I gotta find which house that is. So at first I thought maybe Noe Valley area based on the Salesforce tower and stuff. Then I quickly realized I recognized the condos at the bottom of the hill. So it's actually right here on 18th of Missouri and Potrero Hill. One of the easy giveaways, easy way to find it was the bookstore at the corner. So Ant-Man had a cute little bookstore below his residence. Christopher's Books has been here since 1991. If there's one thing San Francisco is rife with, it's awesome little bookstores. Ant-Man's door right here. Look at that. Paul Rudd was leaning out the door saying goodbye. Ant-Man was right up there. Huh? In the movie, Scott Lang, playing with his daughter in the home, they make like a homemade slide. 
they come tumbling down into this backyard and a foot comes popping out of this fence here. There's one, two, right after the green, and then three, four, so these two. Scott Lang was on house arrest at the time, so his foot going through the fence set off his ankle monitor, so the feds showed up. I didn't know watching the movie. I thought for sure it was a different backyard, but it seems to be actually the same backyard. This home would be very, very expensive, or is very, very expensive. I don't know how much Ant-Man gets paid. You know, I don't know what an Avenger salary is looking like, but this is an expensive home. Paul Rudd right here, huh? Ant-Man himself. It's pretty cool. So if you're in San Francisco, right here on 18th of Missouri, you can see Ant-Man's house. Are you kidding me right now? You should be impressed. You should be proud. Our next location, right across from Buena Vista Park, is Dr. Pim's beautiful gingerbread Victorian house. It looks a little different from the movies. In the movie, the house looks like it's sort of standing alone at the top of the hill. But in reality, there's a more modern house right next to it. I don't think that building is that new to have been built after the filming. It's possible, but I think they probably just cropped it out to make the house stand out more. Right across the street from the house is Buena Vista Park, and there's these steps up there. I think that's where they got one of the main shots of the house. Let's go check. Oh, absolutely, this is where they got it. Cool. Branches are a little overgrown, but this is the shot right here. And in the movie, it's like a dark purple or maroonish type color. And in reality, it's a light blue and a light gray. Such a beautiful house though. So in the movie, Ant-Man actually comes around the side of the building and jumps over the fence to get in the back and parkours up the back of the house while he's halfway up, disables the security system. Just hang in there. Can you believe the real Dr. Pym lived here? You know, it's just a movie, right? It's not real. It's real to me. So if you remember in the movie, this is where Paul Rudd's character, Scott Lang, before he's Ant-Man, tries to pull off a heist in there. He tries to get to a safe in here. It's such a beautiful home. Dr. Pym was living large. There's a little path down to the back where Ant-Man was training. After agreeing to Hank Pym's proposal, Scott starts training to become Ant-Man right here at this house and in this backyard basketball hoop back there now. I don't know if it was here when Dr. Pym was living here. I don't know what Dr. Pym's low post game was like, but he might have been working on it right back there. It appears they're ready for another break in. They got that rubber band gun locked and loaded, ready to go right on the wall. If you do come to check these spots out, remember they are private residences. This is a real neighborhood. It's not a movie set. So be respectful. I oughta squish you. You can't squish me. Don't you know how Ant-Man works? I'm so tired of your shenanigans. So tired. Now for the next one, we gotta cross the Bay Bridge over to Yerba Buena and Treasure Island. This is where in the opening, Dr. Pym is driving down the road to Pym headquarters. Right here on Treasure Island, right across from my favorite view of San Francisco, was where Pym Technologies was headquartered. It wasn't a real building, but it was somewhere right here on the waterfront. One building that is really here is one of the old Treasure Island World's Fair buildings. This is like the main pavilion, I believe. It's a historical landmark. I'd love to do a, a full like World's Fair history video eventually. This is one of my favorite views of San Francisco. I used to come out here all the time. It's all under construction now. They have a ferry stop there. They're really trying to build Treasure Island up. So hopefully the parking spots with the view come back. I hope. So Pym Technologies had quite a piece of real estate. Great location. We talking Pym Particles, huh? Dr. Hank Pym himself came down that road right to Pym Technologies. Pretty cool. And as you can see from the air, Treasure Island was actually man-made. That's why it's perfectly flat and leveled off. Treasure Island? This is where that happened? I read that book. 
You know that's not real either, right? Now here was one of the more tricky ones. Take a look at this screenshot. You may remember the scene where Ant-Man meets up with Dr. Hank Pym and Hope Pym. When they're leaving, Dr. Hank Pym shrinks the office building they just walked out of into little carry-on size. That building with the two points on the left, that's 345 California Center in San Francisco. I'm familiar with that building. On the right is the Salesforce Tower. The problem is, those two buildings aren't in the right positions. California Center is facing the wrong way. The orientation on these buildings is all wrong. And all the other buildings are missing, like the Transamerica Pyramid. And just because I know San Francisco, I knew that there wasn't a parking lot with that much space around it in that part of San Francisco. So with some clues, I tracked it down to this parking lot here in Oakland. As you can see, there's no 345 center. There's no Salesforce tower in the background. They were composited in so that folks would think, hey, that's San Francisco. Of course, now you can see it's no longer a parking lot. It's actually under development. It says there's some housing coming, which we desperately need in the Bay Area. But let me show you the clues that led me to this parking lot. They walk out of this parking lot and you can see that there's a billboard on the wall there. It's a different billboard now than what was in the movie. But when I look closely at the billboard, you can see there's a 510 phone number. Now 510 is the area code for Oakland and the East Bay. So I was like, hmm, that would be odd to be on a San Francisco billboard. So that's when I started looking into Oakland. Of course now it just says Oakland, so it would have been a lot easier if it was that billboard. So as they're walking out, if you look down the street, you can see that maroon burgundy awning with the yellow lettering. I zoomed in close and I Googled. I made out the letters H-I-E-N and I found Hien's Market. Same exact awning. I mean, look at that. The buildings aren't even there. Movie magic, huh? <laughs> they lied to me. So here it is in Oakland, not San Francisco. Really good detective work on this one. You finally said something nice to me. Jeez. I'm always nice. I do so much for you. Dude, I would clobber you right now. Un undo it. Undo it. Put me down. Our next location brings us to Fisherman's Wharf and Pier 39. In Ant-Man and the Wasp, the climactic final battle happened right out here. One of the antagonists, Sonny Birch, is trying to steal the shrunken office building that contains Pym's lab and hops on a ferry to escape from Ant-Man and the ghost Ava Star. It's hard to tell because they have a farmer's market out here so we can't get the exact shot. But this is where Ant-Man ran across and he was chasing the bad guy that hopped a boat and was headed to Alcatraz. But you can't see this building in the background as Ant-Man runs across. Easy to spot is this old arch. It was an old boat launch. These piers used to be a lot more active before they were just a tourist spot. Ant-Man turns into Giant Man, he stops the ferry, he gets Pym's shrunken lab back, but being that large, it's hard to breathe and he starts to lose it. Finally, he passes out right into the water, but not before saving Pym's lab at this same exact pier that we're standing on. The funny part about this scene to me is that water right there is only about 14 or 15 feet deep. Right over here is where the miniaturized office building blew up. Looking through the archway, you can see the USS Jeremiah O'Brien Liberty Ship and the USS Pampanito Submarine. We did a video on both of those, so if you're interested, go back and watch those. I love both of them. This is one of my favorite areas. You got the ships, Musée Mécanique, we did a video on that. Alcatraz right across the way, we've done two videos at Alcatraz. Just love this area. And you can even see PIM Technologies from here. There used to be a bench right here where Scott is resting after Hope jumped into the water to save him. I always loved this archway and it's even cooler that Ant-Man was battling it out right here. I just hope Ant-Man didn't hurt any sea lions.
that's it for Ant-Man filming locations here in San Francisco. Ant-Man 3 is coming soon, so we might have to do a part two of our own. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have a Patreon, a lot of bonus content, bonus episodes, and of course, thanks to the Patreon subscribers we already have. What do you guys think about doing like filming locations this way? What, is it something you guys are into or did it suck? <laughs> Let me know. You know, I had a lot of fun watching the movie, pausing it, screenshotting it, looking around Google Maps. I had a lot of fun. It's sort of like the stadium mysteries I did on TikTok, if you ever saw those, where I tried to find a certain stadium from an old picture. Like, subscribe, share, do all the cool things that cool kids do. Something or other tour for life. Bye, Ant Man. Bye. a lot of money on this. This better work. Do you think these people have any idea that they're eating right across the street from Ant-Man's house? So this was a long one, <laughs> okay? This was a long day, okay? We got up at 6 a.m., okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time for the dog do.